In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. With Let us again call to mind our sins and ask God for forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling that's pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, you must say what is constant with your sound doctrine, namely, that older men should be temperate, dignified, self-controlled, sound in faith, love, and endurance. Similarly, older women should be reverent in their behavior, not slanderers, not addicted to drink, teaching what is good, so that they may train younger women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, good homemakers, under the control of their husbands, so that the word of God may not be discredited. Urge the younger men similarly to control themselves, showing yourself as a model of good deeds in every respect, with integrity in your teaching, dignity, and sound speech that cannot be criticized, so that the opponent will, not, will be put to shame without anything bad to say about us. For the grace of God has appeared saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of glory of the great God and of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. The salvation, salvation of, of the, the just comes, comes from, from the Lord. Lord. Trust in the Lord and do good, that you may dwell in the land and be fed in security. Take delight in the Lord, and he will grant you your heart's requests. Salvation the salvation of, of the, the just comes, comes from, from the Lord. Lord. The Lord watches over the lives of the wholehearted, their inheritance, inheritance lasts forever. By the Lord are the steps of a man made firm, and he approves his way. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Turn from evil and do good, that you may abide forever. The just shall possess the land and dwell in it forever. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the apostles, Who among you would say to your servant, who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here immediately and take your place at table? Would he not rather say to him, prepare something for me to eat? Put on your apron and wait on me until I eat and drink. You may eat and drink when I am finished. Is he grateful to that servant because he did what he commanded? So should it be with you. 
When you have done all that you have been commanded, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done what we were obliged to do. The Gospel of the Lord. Our readings for tonight are interesting and yet quite challenging, especially our first reading from Titus, when it speaks to those of us that are perhaps a little bit older and a little bit wiser. And it asks the question, how is it that we model our lives? How is it that we pass on the gifts that God has given to us to the next generation? The reading from Titus is very clear about how men and women should act. But more importantly, not only how they should act, but how they should be that presence of God in the world. Sharing those gifts and passing it on to the next. Likewise, in our gospel today, it gives the story, one that we've heard many times before, about the master of the house when his servant comes in after plowing the field or tending the sheep. And it says that one line, would he really ask him to come and sit beside him at table? I don't know if you've ever raised sheep, but if someone spends an hour, an hour and a half with sheep, they start to smell like the sheep. The last thing the the master would do is say, come here, sit beside me. But yet that gospel passage says, the, servant sa- the master says to the servant, go put on your apron and serve me. And after I have eaten, then you can eat. And it speaks about that servant raising him up because he did what the master had commanded. Our two readings are reflecting on that. Are we listening to the master? Are we listening to the gift that's been given to us? Or are our lives filled with noise? Are they filled with the distractions of what this world has to offer, failing to allow us to hear the message of salvation and the message of peace? It says that the servant in today's gospel, he will be elevated because he did what he was commanded. And we are to do likewise. What is it that the Lord commands us to do? Love one another as I have loved you. Love your neighbor as yourself. Recognize that we are that instrument, that witness of faith to the world today. Not always easy. Today on election day. A lot of of commentary out there. A lot of discussion about who will do better and who will do worse. I do the magical thing, I hit off. But we have to pay attention. We have to exercise our right to vote. We need to be that that voice for those that have no voice. So these readings are fitting today, especially on this election day. So today, we pray not only for ourselves, But we pray for those that are running for public office, those that will be elected this night. May they truly reflect upon the gift of the common good, not their own elevation, not their own pride, but truly taking to heart what today's reading is all about, recognizing that they too have a responsibility to listen to the Master. Let us share in this Eucharist. Let us pray for one another. Let us pray for our world this day. Let us pray. We do pray for all of those that are running for public office this day, but more importantly, we pray for all Americans that they take the opportunity to vote. May we truly vote our conscience reflect upon those that will do the best good for the common good, and may those individuals elected recognize the responsibility they have. We pray to the Lord. Lord, What intentions would you like to offer this day?
Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. During this National Week of Vocation Awareness, we do pray for the young people that are discerning vocations to the priesthood and religious life. May they be open to that calling and answer if the Lord calls upon them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our Let us continue to pray for all that are sick, those that are hospitalized, those in the nursing homes and their own homes, especially those for, that are on hospice care. May they know of God's healing presence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our Let us pray for those that have died especially those you hold in the silence of your hearts. This night we do pray for the members that are listed on our tree of life, those that are represented by the candles behind me. We also pray for Tim Hayek, the intention of this Mass, and for all the faithfully departed. May they share the gift of eternal life, and those who mourn their loss be comforted. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Loving God, these are our prayers of today. Tomorrow there will be others. Continue to guide and direct us so that we too can be worthy of that gift of eternal life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread that we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine that we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, creator of the world and source of all life. For you never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert, now as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit, and you lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. And so with angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present within our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples and so now for us, he opens the scriptures and he breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, and on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, and then he broke the bread, and he gave it to all of his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks. And then he gave the chalice to all of his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of our sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that's been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope, with Michael our Bishop, with all the bishops, the priests, and the deacons, and your entire people, that as we walk your ways with faith and with hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into our world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of all life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and with the martyrs, with Saint Ludmilla and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. In one voice, let us pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of that peace. Lamb of God,
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those now called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Funeral for Lumiere will be on, the visitation will be Wednesday night at Brosh Chapel from 4 o'clock to 7. The funeral liturgy is Thursday morning, visitation at 9.30, funeral at 10.30. And so you're more than welcome to join us for that funeral liturgy. There will be Mass Thursday night at 5.30 p.m. The Lord be with you. With May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us glorify the Lord by how we live our lives. <laughs> 